welcome, welcome, welcome to the 21st episode of Sawdust Nation with AJ from Crafted and NJ and my lovely, lovely partner, Josh, from, I almost said Crafted in North Country. He is North Country Woodworking. So on this uh, week's episode, we're going to highlight some things that are going in our shop, you know, like usual. Um, we're also going to talk about some other things, maybe hit on some other things and other things. Do you have any other things? Other things? Mm, nope, not today. Okay. So, well, if Josh doesn't have any other things, I'm going to throw it to Josh's cat and ask, what is in Josh's cat's shop? Meow, 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 meow. <laughs> so I, anyway, sir, what is going on in your shop? I know it's been pretty much a hectic week, you know, hectic weekend. You had some issues going on. Now let us uh, let us know what's going on in your shop. Well, now that uh, my cat is playing, I can uh, go ahead and get into what's in my shop. So I have the same pretty much as last week. Uh, I've got a little progress, but uh, <laughs> my laser engraver is not functioning correctly, which is causing some issues in the shop. Because out of all the projects, I think only one does not require any lasering. Jeez. So it, it, I had some time. And I couldn't get in the shop, so I brought the laser inside and I tuned it, quote unquote. Now, when I did that, I tuned the belts. I got everything pretty much how I would think and know and have mm -hmm. done in the past to, you know, just tune up the laser itself. Because, you know, like most CNCs, you have to tighten the belts and you got to tighten the parts and make sure everything's functioning correctly. Yeah. Well, I should not have done that. Because when I brought it back out into the workshop and plugged it in and went to go, you know, do some laser engraving, I started running into some issues. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't quite explain to you why this is the way it is, but my laser is actually functioning better with loose belts. And it's not fixing the problem, but it's coming closer and closer to getting a fix. I'm messing with some settings, um, trying different tensions on the belts. It's just one of those things where it's been a very frustrating couple of days trying to get this thing in a working order so I could finish these projects because legitimately, like, I need to laser engrave them, mm -hmm. do a little finding, final sanding on them, and then finish them and then out the door. So they're at that stage where I'm waiting for this to work. And now I, I got a question because in past episodes, we, we know how your tightening goes, you know, with tightening clamps too tight, squeezing out all the glue in between all the joints. And then, um, you know, how, how tight did you go with these belts? Well, if you're wondering, the stepper motors were moving. They didn't stop in their tracks. So I didn't tighten them that much. Were they but whining? I no, they weren't whining. They, no. they were acting normally. I mean, they had free movement. I'm really hoping it's not the actual diode dying on me because mm -hmm. if that's the case, and I'm spending uh, like $150 just to buy a new, new laser diode. Wow. Um, I don't want to do that, especially right now when I have one of these projects need to be out by the end of the week. So I'm doing everything in my power to try to get a quality product out with a laser that's not producing quality. Now, it, it, let's just say for some reason you cannot do it on your laser. Is it a project that you can do on the CNC but just won't get that burn effect with it? Because, I mean, if if you could do it on the CNC, maybe do a light pass or something like that, couldn't you take a torch to it and make it? The laser look? Now, laser is very different from the CNC, and I'm finding this out um, <laughs> through the course of my laser not functioning correctly. Mm -hmm. So I did just buy two bits from Tools Today. They came in a kit, um, and you can get them off their site. Uh, the two bits are, pause for effect while I pull up the picture. Was it Was it a, uh, I'm sorry to stop you, but it, was it a... Uh uh, a kit or did you buy them individually it's a kit they have it's the ams-243-k it's a two-piece cnc extreme tool life coated sign making pack mm -hmm. uh v type now the two bits that come in it are the 46282k and the 4577-1-k so those are supposed to be really good for fine detail and i have mm -hmm. not tried them out but going back to your question, I have tried the um, V-bit, seeing how much detail I can produce out of that with a light pass. Mm -hmm. And this is where my CNC tuning comes into play. I went in through the Santa plate that I'm supposed to laser engrave onto the CNC, thinking that I can use the V-bit to accomplish the same. I put the aura mask on there. 
I try to do it at the lightest pass I could to see what it would produce. And most of the larger pitchers, like the stain from the glass of milk, the arrows, mm-hmm. and that stuff were coming out. But the fine crucif that I have on the plate it was only coming out like in the large, larger sections, like the one line of H and like a heavy okay. line of the E. The lighter lines weren't actually getting produced. So I went a little deeper and mm-hmm. it got a little better, but it was getting to the point where for the plate for Christmas, I didn't want it to go too deep. You know, I don't want those grooves to be too much. Um, Or I'm going to have to start thinking about epoxy. The whole reason behind doing it on the laser is it doesn't go as deep. It gives you that uh, burn or that black lettering or picture. No epoxy, no paint. It's a one-stop shop once you produce the actual plate and do the round over and all that. But going back to the story... Um, essentially I went through and it was doing okay. And it got to the point where I was like, okay, maybe I can sand down the parts with the lettering and I can do that on the laser. So it's one less, mm-hmm. I don't have to do entire plate. I maybe get some couple good carves out of the engraver and call it a day. I'll let it go. Let it go toward the end. I'm looking at it and then here comes back my bed, not being level. Mm. The left side was fine. On the right side, it was like a bunch of dots. Like you could almost do dot to dot on this thing. Yep. I'm having, you know, issues with my CNC. I'm having issues with my laser engraver. And then I go inside and I see my 3D printer in a ball of Ugh. just filament just moving around. And I'm like, yep. today, today's one of those days. You know, I had to start choosing what I was going to fix to actually start getting things pumped out. So I went ahead and started doing a leveling program on the CNC with a three quarter inch bit, straight bit that I had. The flattening bit I have is three quarter inch shank and it won't mm-hmm. fit. So I uh, I went ahead and found the largest quarter inch shank I could and threw it into the uh, CNC and it happened to be a three quarter inch bit, straight bit. And I ran that program to flatten the bed. Mm-hmm. Thinking back, I went, what was it? I went, I can't remember the, uh, how much I removed, but you could definitely tell the center versus the outsides were definitely different in depth because the amount of material that was being removed in the beginning versus the end was quite a bit. Now I have a flat surface on that. I can go ahead and do V carving and find detailing on that and not so much worry about, you know, left, right side, what's going to end up happening. Mm-hmm. That that flattening bit, you said it was a three quarter shank? It, it, One of inch? the ones I have, yes. Oh, half inch. Sorry, half inch. Shank. I, I was like, man, that's a that's a big shanked um, uh, router bit. I was thinking the three quarter inch straight yep. bit that I was using. I was mixing them up, but yes, that's a half inch. It goes to my big craftsman that I planned on using to flatten um, slabs and whatnot. Okay, I never okay. thought I would be using it for a CNC, so I never because I didn't have one at the time when I bought it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, okay, half just, inch. I just had to. I was like, <laughs> man, this thing's huge. I'm like, I didn't even think they made a router with that big of a collet on it. I'm like, half inch is I, the only one I've seen. I did see you look it up, and I'm curious. Is there I, a router I, out there? I don't – I'd have to do a little bit more research, but I don't believe so. Um, if it is, it's industrial. I was anyway. going to say, that, that's a big router. <laughs> um, yeah, my bad. Good catch on the detail, though. So long story short, I had to kind of figure out what I was going to fix. So I fixed the leveling uh, – or the bed leveling on the CNC. I went inside and I quickly fixed the 3D printer. That needs a little more time. I'm going to have to basically wipe the program that's in there and upload a new program with the BL mm-hmm. Touch that's included and kind of do some messing around with that until it's actually uh, working correctly. But last time I did that, I burnt the card up and I'm really kind of cautious mm-hmm. on doing it again. Yeah, yeah. So um, right now it, it did print out what I needed it to. So there's that. And then the laser, I did some more fine-tuning, messing around with it, and I got some things engraved. Mm -hmm. Um, So out of all three, I got two working to the point where I could produce what I needed. Mm -hmm. Uh, The third one was about 50% there. Okay. But yeah, man, it, it just was one of those days in the shop where it seemed like, you know, all everything I needed to go right wasn't. Mm -hmm. Um, But moving on to the rest, uh, the throw hammers are almost done, the The plaque for the Christmas Eve plate just needs to be engraved. The flag coin holder, I haven't started because I just got half the payment in. So I'll be starting that here sometime soon. Mm -hmm. The patch with the shelf, um, I got most of the parts painted. I got to do the lettering. And that's 
been on hold just because the lettering needs a lot of cleanup and it's been taking some time to do that. And then basically I have a shop safety week coming up and I've been waiting on some products to arrive because I like to host those during that week. Mm -hmm. um, yourself and Trails Custom Woodworks will be joining us during that week. I haven't uh, announced exactly when that is, but it should be coming up within the next week, week and a half. But that pretty much wraps up what's going on in the shop for me. I'm obviously having some trouble, you know, working through it. But uh, when you have problems in the shop like that, you basically got to take a second, determine what needs to be fixed right then and there, and start at A and work your way through D. You know, if you if you dwell on it too much and, you know, you try fixing it in the moment, maybe it's going to make it worse. So then you always got to take a step back reassess it and then, um, you know, determine the best way that you can go about fixing it. Um, when you were talking about the bits that came in your, um, in that CNC, uh, router bit, were you talking about a 45771? Yes, I was. Okay. Now what have you, you haven't tried that one yet, right? I have not tried that one. Do, with the research I've done, that's the one that can actually carve out really fine details, like a 2D logo, essentially, yep. like, uh, say, the Air Force symbol. I'm really excited about that, and I can't wait to give it a try. I will tell you that I I tried this bit a long time ago um, when we were, like, just in the beginning of making the wedding signs, and I just ran a <laughs> quick test pass on a piece of, you know, scrap pine that I had, and I was using Aspire. And in there, it, they ask you the, the pressure that you want on this bit. So the you know the more pressure you add, the deeper the cut's going to go. So I did a real light pass on it because I didn't you know I didn't want to screw anything up. And let me tell you the the detail that came out, and it just did my last name um, with like an established date. And mm -hmm. I have to say, the cursive came out perfect. It wasn't a lot, so it wasn't real real deep like a regular V bit. But mm -hmm. it got all the detail of that um, that carve. So you might even want to try that, um, you know, on a piece of scrap, see how it comes out. And then just in case you can't do it on the laser, you know, for the Christmas plate, you might actually be able to use this and it might turn out, you know, pretty decent. Well, that's the reason I got this kit is because uh, mm -hmm. when I bought those bits, I was having the laser issues. And I don't have time to sit and try to fix the laser for two weeks and then finally produce these projects. Yeah. I'm hoping that the bits that I bought can essentially help me out until I get the laser going or even replace the laser in such a way that I still use the laser when it gets fixed, but I mm -hmm. can in the meantime use those bits. Yeah. Um, even even if I can go ahead and be using the CNC and when the laser is up and running, use both at the same time for similar projects, that's double the output. Oh, yeah. It's definitely nice to have you know two machines going at once. You know, I was going to even say they might even have a laser attachment that you can add. I know on the Millwright um, CNC that I have, they sell a laser that goes onto your router and you can use it, you know, just like a laser. But the problem is if you wanted to CNC something while lasering, then you weren't able to because now your CNC is being taken up. But, you know, if you can get your laser back up and running, then then it's even better because, like you just said, you can do double the production and um, you can also offer it in two different ways, you know, with the laser kind of look. And then you can also offer it in, you know, a little bit different engraved look. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's just one of those things where I got to try it out. The CNC is still very new to me mm -hmm. and I'm trying to work through a lot of the growing pains that come with that bed leveling oh, yeah. being one of them. Um I didn't want to scrape up the new bed, but oh, after yeah. having to carve out some lettering and other stuff, I've already, you know, marked up the bed enough where I didn't hurt so much when I <laughs> went ahead and did leveling program. Yeah. Um, before that one, before and it was touched at all, and it would have been a little different, but it's just one of those things. Yeah, so. no, it makes sense. Um, there, you know, with your CNC, you you said you have the bed, which your bed is uh, MDF, and you know it's it's not so much of a pain if you went into that as much as it would be if I went into mine because I have a uh, aluminum T track bed. The whole thing's <laughs> aluminum, so yeah. you know, cutting through. If I went into that bed, I'd be a little bit more upset because one, I'd probably r most definitely ruin my bit, and then you know, God only knows what else might go wrong. So, uh, and then I still have to send you that file for that, um, that bed that I was telling you about, 
with uh, all the holes in it so that you can do some mounting uh, options as well. Yeah, I would definitely appreciate that. Um, MPG Creations gave me a great idea. He goes, go ahead and level the bed and then throw on some MDF to cover it mm -hmm. so that your original bed stays flat. Yep. And the top can get all uh, jacked up and you can replace it fairly easy that way. And with that file, I can easily drill the holes in it and call it a day and just continually going through material. Because the bed that uh, comes with the X-Carve, it's attached to everything else. I mean, to the body, to every to remove that and replace it would be a huge pain. And just to put some MDF on top and then, you know, screw it down, be able to remove that at will, that's oh, a big yeah. difference. So, yeah, I mean, I have some options. I have definitely... Uh, I just have to get in there and, you know, fix it up and make it more mine and modify it in some ways. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, it, you definitely got a lot going on in your shop. Um, I mean, same with me. It's, you know, like usual, you know, I got flags, more flags, and a lot of flags. Um, I think I just counted it the other day between flat flags and wavy. I think I got like... 15 or 16 different flags that I got to do. And, um, that's just, you know, that's just like breaking the surface because or scratching the surface. And, um, I got a lot of stuff going on. We just, uh, posted up some yoga signs that we're doing for a black Friday kind of like uh, meetup at Kim's yoga studio. They're actually doing uh, like a fundraiser kind of thing. And then, um, she was, uh, talked to her by one of her uh, instructors. And she said, Hey, we're doing this, you know, thing on black Friday. Do you want to join? You know, I know your husband makes stuff, you know, wood stuff and whatnot. And so we did a whole bunch of signs. Kim's actually in the process of painting them right now. And I posted up a couple of them, but, um, mm -hmm. once they're all done, I'll get a good picture of the whole group. I mean, I probably got at least like, uh, 10 or 12 different signs. They're all cut on the CNC. Uh, they were all cedar because I mean, just the look of the cedar and then she paints over it, it, you know, just the carves, it really makes them pop. And um, I have to say, I use the RC-1145 V-bit. That's the 45 degree from Amana mm -hmm. Tools. And man, I'm telling you, that bit, I did such fine detail on it, on this one carve. And I was actually blown away that it it did it so perfectly without chip out. Um, it, ah, man, it just blew me away. You know, those V-bits are crazy. You know, I know you've been diving into them. Um, the 60 degree V bit, the RC 1148 is my go to, but the 45 degree is like my my runner up. I'll do that if I have a little bit more intricate where I know the 60 degree would be a little bit too big for it. So I just wind it down a little bit. And I'm telling you, that thing cuts amazing. The only problem I ever had with it was that one time where it the screw loosened up. So a, a big thing for you. Every time you put your V bit in, check that mm -hmm. screw because At, <laughs> yeah, I it's had funny that you say one that. time. Yeah, you after know. you did that, I have literally been checking every time to ensure mm -hmm. that that has been secure. Now, I do have a question about your forty five. Yep. When you bought that, you were unsure. It seemed like you were unsure mm -hmm. about getting it. Now it sounds like you really enjoy having it. Let's put it this way: I'm unsure about every purchase that I make. <laughs> <laughs> until I start using it, like, you know, I can make a purchase, uh, I could buy wood that I need. And I'm like, you know, beating myself up because I'm going like, ah, I shouldn't have bought all that wood. And I'm never going to mm -hmm. use it. You know, I go through it, I go through buyer's remorse, you know, because just stuff that happens. So, you know, I always go through different things and bits are the same way. And you know, they're expensive. The 45 degree, Absolutely. I want to say was yep. I I'm going to pull it up now, but um, I know it was like 35, 40 bucks maybe. And um, let's see. It was, drum roll please, actually more than that. It was about 70. So <laughs> almost double. <laughs> most double. So I apologize about that. But, you know, I, I needed it because one, I love tools. And then two, I'm seeing that I'm able to use it for things that I'm able to sell. So it kind of, now that I'm using it more, now I'm seeing, okay, what it can do and the versatility of having the 60 degree versus the 45. I also have a 90. I have not touched the 90 degree bit and I keep, I keep wanting to do a test, but I'm not sure what, 
like why I would need it. I've watched a few people use it. Um, I mm-hmm. picked it up because I saw a lot of videos online, but I never used it. And I keep racking my brain. What do I want to use it for? What do I want to try it on? I think what I just have to do is make something in Aspire and um, render it with the 90 degree bit, see how it comes out. Because most of the time the the rendering is you know almost exactly what comes out on the on the machine. So I'm curious on what the advantages are to the 90 versus, you know, the ones that I've been using, the 60 and the 45 degree. But yeah. um, I will tell you, like I said, that's the only issue I ever had on, yeah, I, I want to backtrack because I'm lying as I'm remembering. The 60 degree, I actually had the uh, knife move on me. I never had it break, knock on wood, but I had it slide a little bit. So the screw must have loosened up a hair. And it actually pushed the tip of the knife inward. So it wasn't, um, you know, perfectly aligned on the slot. Because I know yeah. when they tell you, you know, you get a new knife or something like that, you you put it in and you make sure it's even the whole way down. Mm-hmm. And um, I noticed on the 60 degree V bit that it actually moved one time because I'm, I'm setting it up like I normally do. And I'm looking at the bit going, something looks a little off and realized that it actually moved. Once I tightened it back up, you know, readjusted it, it was fine. I haven't had any issues. I keep looking at it, and I do tighten the screw every single time now because I don't need another failure like that. But, you know, cutting through the cedar, that's, a, you know, that's a soft wood, so you're not, you know, really putting a lot of strain on it. Um, and I have to say, those signs came out really, really well. The Aura mask worked out great. Kim loves it because she can, you know, just paint, won't have to worry about any bleed, and... um You rip it off and it's no problem. The only problem I ever had with Aura Mask, not even a problem, it's just a pain on all the little fine details that aren't connected to anything. Like I had a lot of dots on this one. So Uh I literally had to take a little X-Acto knife and pick off each little piece of Aura Mask and it's time consuming. But hey, it is part of it. So anyway, um, worked on the CNC a little bit. Uh, Other than the yoga signs, I did this crescent moon uh, with some flowers engraved into it. So it was a whole cutout. I actually reached out to you uh, about it because I did it on three quarter ply and realized that it's chipping a little bit. So you gave me the suggestion of doing it out of MDF. I'm going to do that over this weekend because I actually got an order for uh, two more of them. So I got three in total that I got to do. Um, charcuterie boards are coming together. I'm just, I don't have a spindle sander. I keep racking my brain and wanting to buy one but you know i'm just going to do it by hand for now save the money if you wanted to save money you could go online and get something for your drill press mm-hmm. and you can do a spindle sander on your drill press and it's gonna be okay for maybe this time and next time but i mean it might give you that time you need to wait for that black friday sale that you've been looking for you know i'm at the point right now where i don't need anything i got you know i got um like three quarter inch dowels. So I'm thinking of just taping some, uh, um, or I'm sorry, ad- spray adhesiving some mm-hmm. sandpaper to it and just using that. I don't have a lot to take off. It's not like I have to take off a ton of material. And then eventually I'll get the rigid um, spindle sander because I keep eyeing it. You know, I, I know I could use it and eventually it'll be in the shop. But, you know, a little. I got to get some more orders under my belt before I do that. I'll, I have a lot of orders in the shop, but I need to get them out. So I'm trying to focus on, you know, doing all those flags to get those out. And that'll bring in some money so then I can, you know, put it towards a, a new tool. So um, with that, um, I actually just finished up the wine caddy that I was doing. And, you know, the, the one that goes on top of the bottle, two glasses, mm-hmm. it actually yeah. works out really well. I'm surprised um i thought maybe it would it would sit and get like pushed to the side and then a wine glass would fall off but it actually holds the wine glasses perfect um put a little chan uh, not a chamfer i did a little round over the whole thing did a smaller round over on where the glasses go and it came out really really nice so now i just got to finish sand and um probably do some oil i'm actually thinking of doing some odies on it um let that pop the grain on that um, what else do I have? I have a coffee cup rack that I have just gotten commissioned for. It's going to have like five rows. I don't know how many cups, maybe four or five cups per row. And it'll hang on a wall, something simple. And, um, 
You know, I got asked by Trails just recently if there was a new Merca in my shop because I hinted towards that last time. Um, I'm wondering. I did meet up with the Merca rep. Um, we went over a few things with the three inch sander that I was looking at. Um, I was able to test one out on one of my flags and it worked out flawlessly. I have to say the three inch definitely was able to get into where I need to because right now I'm using the five inch DeWalt RO and mm-hmm. it's, it's big, you know, and I, I don't, I can't sand the contours so well, even with the foam pad. So what I did was, um, talk to him about the three inch and, um, there may be one on order. <clears throat> oh, there's one on order. The fact that you said that sands what you need. Oh, there's oh, one on order. As soon as <laughs> like, I held, no as, doubt. As, yeah. as soon as I held it and put it to the flag, I was like, "Well, I'm sold." So yeah. uh, just I knew before you went. I knew before you knew that you were getting that sander. Yeah, I. I, I think even, the I, wife I had, knew too. Oh, she 100. She was the one who told me just buy the damn thing because it's going to make your life easier. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I know. I had buyer's remorse before I even bought it. <laughs> so you went through the uh, seven or we could do five stages of buyer's remorse. I went through probably five times a few on that one. <laughs> but, you know, the the price point is definitely, you know, higher than normal. But I look at it as it's a sander that I'm going to be able to use for multiple projects. My thing right this very second is I'm not a furniture maker. I'm a flag maker. Mm-hmm. I eventually I'll have to get away from that and, you know, I still have it in my back pocket and then do bigger and better things. But, you know, I enjoy doing the flags. I carved out just this past weekend. I carved out, I think, seven new flags and it was enjoyable. I watched them all come, you know, to life from these blocks of wood and to see something come at, come to life like that is actually pretty cool. And um, so I figured even after I um, buy it, I'm going to be able to make that money back in in quite a few, you know, in not so many flags. Like I'll be able to sell a few of them and then pretty much the Sanders paid for. So, um, yeah, yeah. And it's going to make because I timed it out for myself with the DeWalt on a three foot flag. It it took me. I want to say at least a good half hour, 45 minutes to sand it one grit. That's Mm -hmm. it. So now, and it's not like I had a lot of blemishes that I had to take out from the grinder, but it was just the fact that this, the sander, it's, it's a good sander. It's the one I, you know, started with and, but it's not meant for this, the three inch, I'll be able to get into those smaller spots. And now that I'm carving my waves a little bit different than I was in the past, um, there's more depth to them. So the five inch can't get into there. That's where the three Uh inch will shine. And, uh. I also learned from the Merca rep that I'm a- able to add a few interfaces, which are the foam pads. So I can add like two or three foam pads and really contour. So I'm excited about it. It's probably going to be here. I'm guessing probably first week of December. Um, and I'm looking forward to receiving it. It's going to be cool to have uh, another Merca in the shop. That's going to be pretty cool, man. I can't wait to see you uh, start using it and, uh, showcase how well it's working for you definitely as soon as i get it in you know the whole world will know (laughs) of course (laughs) so that's uh that's pretty much what's going on in my shop and yours let's uh get into some topics that we got today so i'm going to because i'm i'm curious on your take i want to get into this dust collection so okay Josh and I were talking a couple of days ago, maybe a week or two or three. I'm not really sure, so I just said just a couple of days. Um, <laughs> but as as most you most of you know, you know, Josh and I both have dedicated dust collection systems, and then also we have um, shop vacs in our shop. Now, I when I first started, I pretty much sure you started kind of the same way. I started out with a shop vac. And then I moved to a shop vac with a dust topper. And then Mm -hmm. I couldn't use that anymore because I was growing and I had a CNC now. So I had more tools that I wanted to be able to hook up to that dust collection system. And, you know, a lot of tools that we have are four inch ports. And then once you scrunch that down to two and a half, it doesn't work so well. I learned that on quite a few tools. I learned that on my table saw big time because 
my table saw is a four inch and I was using, you know, the shop vac for it wasn't working out so well. So the dust collection came in and really came to shine. Um, once, uh, once I was able to hook it up to a four inch, everything gets sucked out of that. So <laughs> our topic is, you know, what's the pros and cons of having a dust collection versus shop vac? Can you do everything with just a shop vac? Can you do it all with just a dust collection? Do you need both? So I'm going to throw it to you, sir. What's, uh, what's your take on this one? Well, much like you said, um, I started off with a shop vac. I did the rigid, and then I went and got the dust stopper with the filter pal. And mm-hmm. honestly, it worked great. Like I, most of my tools I was able to connect to, except for the bigger ones, and obviously you need different ports and whatnot. But I knew that I needed a dedicated dust collector eventually because, you know, the more bigger tools you have, you're, you're, you're going to need it. And, you know, I eventually wanted to be able to shut my doors in my garage and work out of the shop, basically, without having to open that. So, long story short, um, I believe you got your dust collector, and we were talking about, you know, the pros and cons of, you know, the one you got. And I was doing mm-hmm. some looking around. Bought a dust collector for myself that was a one-horsepower wall-mounted dust collector with canister filter. It's from Grizzly, and mm-hmm. uh, I had a really good deal on it. It just took forever in a day. I'm pretty yep. sure that either in the podcast or in our lives, we talked about it. It took like two and a half months to get to my door because they were on back order. But once I got it, I hooked everything up, had everything already delivered to the house because of the weight. And ever since, I love it. I love being able to connect to my bigger tools. You could definitely tell the difference. I don't get backed up with sawdust or yep. chips. Um, it, you know, handles everything pretty good. Um, I don't have to empty out my dust collection like three times during a good shop weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still use my shop vac. I, I didn't get rid of it. I did get rid of the, the dust stopper. I still use my filter pal, mm-hmm. but my shop vac is still heavily used in the shop and it might not be used um, like I used to when I first started out, but I now use it for, um, a supplemental dust collection. So basically I have a port, a two inch port going off of my, um, my main dust collector. And that is mainly set up for the CNC. So if Mm -hmm. I have my CNC going, which this scenario usually never happens, but bear with me. So if I have the CNC going for any reason that is using my dust collector, if I have another two and a half inch port, uh, tool that I'm going to use, I'll go ahead and use my shop vac and I'll use that way. I'm not taking away from my CNC. Um, I want to make sure that that has as much suction to it and gets all the dust and fine particulates, whatever it's cutting, um, and not have to mess with that too much. Um, so that, and, and then fine cleaning and stuff like that too, because even with a one horsepower major dust collector, it doesn't have the suction as a small shop vac does. Um, I definitely have noticed a difference in that where, you know, I'm trying to get behind some of my tools and there's a pile of dust. I can really get in there with my shop vac and clean that up as well. So it does have a place in the shop and I am not going to get rid of it anytime soon or probably ever. It's a good shop vac and I definitely use it almost every time I'm in the shop in some way. I even use it as supplemental cleanup when I'm doing the CNC and if my dust boot ain't capturing all that because sometimes I go in a divot and some of that dust will escape when I get sucked up or I'm cutting out uh, parts. And if you're doing MDF, sometimes that's a lot of dust that gets captured in that groove. Oh, I'll yeah. go behind the CNC bit and go ahead and suck that out with that your shop vac to make it easier for the next pass. Mm-hmm. So, there are a hundred different ways I use my shop vac. Um, I've used it to, as a blower, you know, after I empty out real good, I'll go ahead and use it as my blower to blow out the shop. Yep. I use it, you know, for cleanup. I use it for supplemental dust collection and, you know, my little one loves going out there and using it to clean up sawdust. So I'll sweep a big pile and depending on the day, you know, it'd be the shop vac or the made, you know, the four inch dust port, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm not going to get rid of my dust collection. And I know it's tempting when you get 
you know, your major dust collection for the shop. You're like, oh, I don't need this anymore. In fact, that was me. We had this discussion. I even asked yep. you, do you even use your shop vac? And uh, I, I'm glad I didn't get rid of it. I'm glad I still have it because I continue to use it. Oh, yeah. So in what ways are you glad that you either have it or are you still on the fence about keeping it? What's your take on this? Well, no, my shop vac – that's going to stay with me until it dies. And then I'll buy another one. I'll always have a shop vac because they are so versatile. Um, you know, you can go from, I, you know, cleaning up something to like, I, I got, um, I mean the shop vac you can use around the house. You could use it in your shop. And my biggest thing that I use it in the shop for is sanding. Um, I want to get a smaller one just dedicated for sanding and that's it because, um, you know, sanding the far, fine particles um, get really attached to my filter pal. And then, you know, some of them make it through the filter pal because they're so small. When you're sanding, it's not like you're doing chips and whatnot. Um, I would hope you're not doing chips because then that's definitely not sanding or you're using like one grit <laughs> sandpaper. So, um, you know, I just actually recently cleaned my uh, filter pal out. And man, from sanding so much that the sand... Um, the sawdust, I almost said sanding dust, which wouldn't be wrong, um, <laughs> got caked to the uh, filter pal. So I cleaned it all out. It's like a brand new shop vac. But my shop vac is mainly used for on uh, my miter station. What I do is after I do a lot of cuts and whatnot, I have a dust collection uh, hose hooked up to it. And it it takes about like 50% of the, the uh, chips. So for the rest of it that falls on the ground behind the miter state or miter uh, saw, I will take my shop vac because when I first got my dust collection, I went, well, this thing has a lot more power than my uh, shop vac. So it should be able Mm -hmm. to suck up anything I throw at it. Well, yes and no. The limitation of it is it's not a shop vac. It it's, you know, it's cumbersome to put into those hard to reach places. You know, it's not going to, do a full cleanup. It's, it's meant to just suck it from, you know, if you got it in a pile or something that like that, it will pick it up. But if you have it all spread out, like around the miter saw, you, you, it just isn't feasible. There's, it's not enough velocity. Um, I could be wrong because, you know, you go up to a four inch, you got more volume, but you don't have, you don't have that powerful suction. Uh, if that makes yeah, any kind of sense. You're absolutely right. That's when I said clean up and, you know, try to get around tools. The miter saw is one of the big tools. Mm-hmm. I don't have any kind of dust collection around it. I do have a two and a half inch that goes to a four and a half to use, but that gets a small portion of all the stuff that gets kicked out back there. Yeah. And, you know, I, I use my shop vac to clean that up. Um, you know, clean the shop floors up. And then Uh also on top of that, like you said, the CNC, um, I don't have my, I don't bring my shop vac in there, but I have a Milwaukee cordless one that I keep right next to me. And, you know, if I see that the main dust collection isn't picking it up, I'll just go behind it, you know, clean it up a little bit and then, uh, you know, continue the carve. Um, but my biggest thing that I wanted with a full blown dust collection, and I don't have, you know, a fancy, fancy one. I have a shop Fox. I don't remember. It's like 600 and something, um, CFMs. It's a, mm-hmm. uh, one micron canister filter with a bag underneath. Same like yours. Almost. They look identical except just different. They people. literally, yeah, they're, yeah. That's what I was going to say. They literally are the same everything but they're made from different people, quote unquote, probably in the mm-hmm. same factory. And then they Most get definitely. thrown in. Yeah. The, the only way I would ever upgrade mine is I can't do a floor standing model just because I'm limited on floor space. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I had a two car garage, then I could definitely, you know, do a floor standing and get a little bit more volume, but I'm looking at eventually upgrading it to one of the Rockler, uh, dust rights. I think like it's 1250 CFMs. And the main reason that I would ever upgrade mine is so I can operate two tools at once. Currently, I can't. If I'm running the CNC, I have it all hard piped. I know you have yours on a flex line, right? I do. But, I mean, my shop, not that it's smaller than yours, Mm -hmm. but my hose hose doesn't need to go as far as yours does. 
Yeah, I mean, my longest run is to the CNC, and I have that. I have you know four inch um, PVC the whole way around the shop, and I branched it off. I got a main with the handle from uh, Rockler, you know, the dust red uh-huh. handle. I got that one that I can hook up to kind of any tool that I want. I can hook it up to my smaller uh, bandsaw. I can then hook it up to my table saw, which I mainly use. Or, you know, if I'm routing something and I want dust uh, collection near it, I could put that near it. Then I have two ports for um, one for the miter saw, one for the big bandsaw. And then the fourth port is to the CNC. That's about Uh like 30, 30 some odd feet. And I have to say it picks up almost everything off that CNC. Um, But it, it, it's not a shop vac. And the the only reason, like I said, I would get a larger dust collection is because if I'm running the CNC, I can run something else at that same time. I can still run it. It's just not going to be able to suck up anything because now you're split in 600 and some odd CFMs in half, and you're also losing it throughout the pipe. So, you know, how much are you really picking up at that point? It could be only 200 CFMs. You know, it's not much. Well, with the flex hoses too, you lose a little yep. bit as well. Um, I know for a fact that I do with using only flex hose, but mm-hmm. for my shop, that's the only thing I can really use. Um, and it works for me. Um, the way I have mine set up, especially with a recent modification that I did for the two and a half inch port, mm-hmm. it works, it works really well. Um, would I like a hard pipe shop? Of course, because I would probably gain some CFM there. I would also, you know, wouldn't have to move the rockler, uh, dust Mm -hmm. handle port thing back and forth and yeah convenience would be there but honestly it doesn't take long to move it back and forth i have a on and off uh switch uh remote so i can sit there hook it up and then when i'm ready or when i'm done i could turn it off or on um but the only thing i know personally i would like to do with my system to make it a little more convenient as much like uh peter does from petrie workshop he has his suspended, so oh, yeah. it's not on the ground. Now, I've been thinking about different ways that I could do that, especially with the location of mine is. That mm-hmm. way, I would actually get more distance out of my my line instead of having to go around the CNC and yep. uh, around tools, so it's another tool. Um, so I've been thinking about how to go about doing that, and it has a lot to do with bungee cords and a pipe and some yep. carabiners maybe, and something like similar to that. Um but I haven't really planned it out in such a way I'm going to install anything. Hmm. But, I mean, like, you can't go wrong. The ones that we have work. Especially, oh, yeah. I mean, it's impressive. It works so well in your shop with it being hard piped as far as it is. And to your CNC, which is in the other room. Yeah. Um, something I know personally I could do better is, even though I'm using the flex line, is go around with the, um, I want to call it speed tape because that's what we call it. But that metallic tape, mm-hmm. the ducting tape. I could probably go around some of the um, parts that I have connected in with that just to seal a little better. Oh, yeah, another, yeah. Another portion that I don't think we think about often is the barrels. We use the same barrels. You sent me the link from Amazon about the same barrel. That that particular seal might not be completely airtight as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean. I was, I was, I was going to say, um, that's right. I forgot you had a two-stage. Um, mm-hmm. You bought the same barrel I did, which I like because the barrel's small enough. Um, I forget how many gallons it is. I think like a 20. 30. It is 30. 33, 30. I think I want to say it's a 33 for some weird reason. I, I wanted to go larger with the barrel, but I didn't want to take up too much space. And um, I put the – I think I got it from Rockler as well. It's the ports that go on top to create like a sort of a vortex in there. And yeah. I, I have to say how – how full can you get your barrel before you um, notice that it's starting to suck it into the uh, dust collection? It gets pretty full. I can only get mine, hmm, let's see, maybe about halfway full, and then I have to uh, empty it out. And the reason being is because I guess the vortex is picking up the chips and picking it up into the dust collector. Like I said, the barrel's too small for what we're trying to use it for on my end, but, mm-hmm. you know, it works. I mean, I'm not doing, you know, I'm not planing every single day or jointing every single day where it's filling up in a matter of minutes. Most of the time I can go weeks without, you know, cleaning it out. And then I'll notice, I'll hear the change in the dust collection and um, I'll hear like the little chips hitting the propeller. 
So I noticed, yeah. okay, I'm sucking up the, the stuff. You got something? Well, for me, I, I don't really notice until I start looking at the bag. And when I notice the bag starting to fill up fairly fast, mm. uh, especially when I'm doing any kind of planning or anything like that, that gives me a clue that the barrel's full. And I would say it probably gets up to three quarters full before wow. I have to really worry about it. And I don't know. I don't. They give you a template. There's nothing different that we did. Yep. I, I just. I, I don't know why it would be a little higher for me. But, you are. Uh, you are pointing yours in opposite directions, right? The uh, ports. <laughs> yeah, yes. I. Yeah, uh, just. I, just asking. Maybe oh, you were doing well, we something were, different. You were closer than I were. It's a 14 gallon. It's not a 30. I okay, don't know why I, I was saying 30. I wanted to get a 30, but just like I said, the size, and I already have this one piped. You know, it's already there. Yeah. I siliconed everything down. So, I mean, not that I can't break the silicone away, but I kind of made everything to fit. My my hard piping is not too hmm. far away. So if I went 30, I'm afraid that it's going to be too high now, and I might not be able to fit it. Because I'd have to post up a picture of it. Um but you know what? I, I it, it suits my needs right now because my biggest thing was like you hit on, I did not want to have to move my handle from the table saw to the miter saw, miter saw to the table saw to the band saw. I figured have the miter saw connected, the band saw connected, and then the handle I can use on my table saw, which mainly goes on there. And then once I'm done with the table saw, then I can, you know, put it away and I'm not tripping over it because that was another thing I didn't want. I didn't want hoses just laying on the ground and I don't have enough space where my ceilings are only like seven and change high. So I don't, I can't have drop downs. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of limited on that. So the way I have mine set up works perfect for me. I'm really happy that I never got rid of my um, shop vac, but uh, the dust collection has changed everything for me. So, uh, you know, I know we went on a long rant on this one, but the dust collection, if you, if you're currently do using a shop vac and you are thinking about going to a dust collection, um, I would say, look into it. You know, like I said, myself, I wanted to get floor, mo a floor model one to get higher CFMs. But the problem yeah. is I needed a wall mounted because now I can, I don't take up valuable floor space that I need. Um, Absolutely. Even though, you know, it's not like I'm storing, it's not like I'm working underneath the dust collector, you know, but I still have that two foot height, you know, from the bottom of the bag to the floor um, that I'm able to utilize to store stuff or whatnot. And, um, it, you know, it works out really, really well. So I have to say, you know, keep your shop back and uh, get a dust, coll dust collector, if I could say it right. <laughs> well, I was going to uh, add on your shop back. With mm -hmm. the dust stopper and the filter pal done correctly, can last you a very long time. Oh, yeah. Now, um, go ahead and go check out Ginger Woodworks. He actually used um, a setup with a... Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, what do you do? It's a garbage can. Yeah, think, yeah it's he a garbage can. He hooked up to it. Yeah, it's a... I forget what kind of lid it was, but anyway, he hooked it up to a, a much larger container... And was able to utilize that, I think, with the dust stopper, if I yep. remember correctly. I do and remember saying this. He has a, a collection system with his shop vac that he only has to, you know, empty out once in a while. And there's also a lot of YouTube videos out there mm -hmm. that show you how to create carts with bigger containers and whatnot to get the most out of that system. So, I mean, like, getting a dedicated dust collection is nice. And it definitely is an upgrade to a shop. If you can't afford that, there's ways around it and to utilize mm -hmm. your shop vac in such a way you're getting the volume and you don't have to empty it every weekend out of, you know, a trash can or a bigger container. Even, a, you know, 55 gallon barrel, you know, one of the plastic ones, you oh, yeah. can probably set up a pretty nice collection in that. So, you know, there's, there's options out there. And if you can get a dust collection system, great. You know, that's going to definitely benefit you. But there's always other options out there. One very quick thing. The only thing I can say is I'm very happy I got my dust collection because it's quieter than my shop vac. 100%. I cannot believe the difference between the, the loudness of my shop vac compared to mm -hmm. my dust collection. Oh, yeah. It's definitely, it's definitely noticeable. You can walk in your shop without, you know, ear protection on and, 
you, of course, I use it anytime I'm running the dust collector for a long, long time, especially with the CNC. Um, if that's going for a couple hours, then that dust collector is going for a couple hours. So um, definitely, uh, definitely a great upgrade to any kind of shop, but definitely uh, shop vac is always good to have on hand. So now one thing I wanted to touch on with you, and I'm, I'm, I hope we don't go on too, too much of a rant because I want to touch on this topic. And then I also want to ask you about your other one. I do want to get through these topics, sir. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's do it. So the next one I have for you is um, because I, and I'm, I'm, I might not even answer because I already answered it with my Merca, but we both have a lot of tools in our shops. We both really love getting tools. And in your future or any kind of future outlook, is there any tools that are in that little outlook of yours? Um, nothing in the near future. I, I just got the CNC. I'm trying to figure that out. Mm-hmm. I have my 3D printer. I'm still trying to fine tune that. Um, I have my laser that, you know, I obviously need some work on. Mm-hmm. Um, if anything pops up between now and then, it would be a, because a tool broke. Yeah. Or um, I got sick and tired of messing, <laughs> say, with my laser. Um, that's the only thing right now it's on the forefront of my mind is my laser. I'm really okay. concerned that, uh, I'm not going to be able to get this thing working correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm going to do everything I can to get it working correctly. And if I have to buy another, um, diode, I will, but, uh, yeah. you know, I eventually, and I say this not because it's going to show up at my house next week, but I would like to get something similar, if not the Glowforge, because, with that particular system, I can go ahead and put it inside the house, especially with the filtration system, and I yeah. won't have to worry about what I worry about now is my CNC and everything in my shop creates some kind of dust particulates, and that gets on to the, my laser. I really need to, A, build a better enclosure for my laser. It's fine where it's located. I just need a better enclosure. Mm-hmm. So that is limited. And once it's fixed, I think that's what I'm going to do. I think that's going to be the f- next shop project I have to do right away. That That's about it. Because, like, I have plans for other shop projects, but I have all the tools I believe I need. You know, this is excluding some bits here and there or whatever. Yep. Especially toward the end of the year, I don't have anything in the Outlook. The only thing I really want to do is start working on the shop in different ways to create a better workspace. Because mm-hmm. I have some ideas I've shared on here to make it a better workspace for myself. But I'm going to go ahead and slingshot that question toward you and see if uh, other than that standard you got, if there's anything else on your horizons. No, nah, not really. I, w- I would say it's just two sanders, um, the the Merca and then eventually the um, – I it's – <laughs> It's pretty funny that I'm saying I don't want to spend the money on the rigid right now, but I want to spend it on the Merca. But the Merca is going to make me more money in the long run than the um, spindle sander because it's not like I'm going to take my wavy flags over to the spindle sander and, you know, use it. (laughs) And I'm not that (laughs) good. I could try, but I don't think it would work that well. Um, You know, and I'm not batching out charcuterie boards, you know, left and right where I'm doing constant radiuses and whatnot. The Merca would be perfect for me right now. So I'm just uh, kind of sticking to that. But Outlook, Outlook, I think it would be the uh, rigid spindle, spindle sander. Um, and then one thing that I, I just fell upon today, uh, I was watching a video and you know me, Milwaukee everything. And they have the M18 quiet compressor. So... Mm-hmm. I'm I'm almost tempted to say eventually that'll be in my shop because I have a 60 gallon compressor right now for what I have no idea. I got it for free. <laughs> so, oh, so that's why you have it. it Best exactly. tools are free, man. It didn't cost me a dime. So I was like, yeah, of course I'll take a 60 gallon compressor. I'm going to need it. I build up air and I probably have it for, I don't think that needle budges if I use it, you know, for the hour long use that I might put onto it, you know, in a day. So, um, but I was thinking I'll probably sell that and then sell the little pancake compressor that I got. And then maybe eventually get that Milwaukee one. If you have not heard the video, I got to see if I could find that video and send it to you. That compressor is quiet. Very, very quiet. Now I'm, I need to get on the compressor talk a little bit. I got a little craftsman. I honestly don't even remember, you know, what size it is because it's mm-hmm. buried under the laser in the corner. Um, I basically 
plug it in and turn it on when I need to. Um, I use my compressor quite often, though. I use it to blow out dust, or mm-hmm. definitely crevices and stuff like that. Um, you know, before I do any kind of finishing, I use it um, <laughs> to fill up the car's tires so I pull them right up to the yep. garage. Um, you know, for my nail guns, my pin gun, everything like that. But it does not... It's not enough to hold, and it definitely goes off, and the thing is so loud. Mm-hmm. It's actually loud enough where if I leave it plugged in and forget about it, Ouch. I could be upstairs in my bedroom, and I could hear it go off. Yep. So I got to run down and turn it off because it could disturb the neighbors or even you know my kids. Oh, yeah. Um, so you know it's kind of interesting. You said that. It's never been on my horizon, but uh, I'm interested to see how quiet this thing is and you know, how – how many gallons? I'd have to look it up again, but um, I know it's not huge, but you know what? For the stuff, because, you know, my my compressor, I'm using it for exactly like you said, filling up some tires. Um, if I need to do, what is it? I usually use a brad nailer. So, I mean, how much air yeah. are you going through? And if I throw yeah. a 12-0 oh battery on it, that thing will last me for a while. And I'm thinking where my 60 gallon compressor is, that's a lot of wasted space. So I might be able to, you know, if I get the rigid spindle sander, then I could build a little cart and store it right there. And then I at least have it out of the way, but in the shop. Um, yeah. So I'm actually going to look it up as we speak now, because I did not look this up because it didn't come on my brain earlier, but it's a two gallon compact, quiet compressor. And it's only two gallons. though, huh? Yeah. But, in all honesty, for what I need it for, I I can't see myself needing anything larger. Because I think uh, I have a little pancake that's three, three, and I use that every once in a while. You know, 60 gallons. I mean, that thing, it's gigantic. You know, it's too Yeah, I wouldn't go with a 60 gallon. I, I definitely wouldn't go with the largest one I can. Um, but the six gallon I have, which is the Craftsman, I just looked it up. Um, I, I can run through that fairly easy, especially if I'm mm-hmm. blowing off something or um, not so much if I'm doing any kind of, you know, nail gun work or pin gun mm-hmm. work. But uh, it, I don't know, maybe if it was quieter and I w- didn't notice it going off as much. Yeah. But I'm telling you, when that thing goes off, you, you can hear it through the house. Oh, There's yeah. There's no doubt that the compressor going. In fact, my little one thinks it's, uh, he calls it the woodpecker because <laughs> his room's right above the shop. So mm-hmm. he, he thinks the woodpecker is actually going off. Uh, that's how loud it is in his room. I have, um, it, it is a, a correction. I do have a six gallon as well. And you are right. That does go through air pretty quick. But I could justify a compressor kicking on more times if it's quiet than. Yeah, but. If it kicks on more times, wouldn't it actually the lifespan be lower? You do have a point. Maybe I won't be getting this Milwaukee after all. Well, I mean, like it'd be good for like you know small jobs and whatnot. But I'm just thinking for the shop for your mm-hmm. for right now. You have a sixty gallon, and I can see that lasting forever. But for me, if I was going to buy a new one, I definitely would want something that can withstand at least one day of use without mm-hmm. really kicking off. I'm good with what I have. I'm, I'm not oh, yeah. complaining at all. Uh, if anything, I just wish it was quieter. But um, I only turn it on when I need it, and then mm-hmm. I let it build up to you know whatever I have it set on, and then I use it, and I'll do the same next time. And it's not oh, yeah. every time I'm out there by any means. But no, no. My biggest thing is noise, and the sixty gallon takes you know it takes a little bit to fill up to you know one hundred and twenty. And um, I can definitely see that taking a minute. <laughs> you know, once it's up to 120, I could, I'm all day, you know, because when I was building the French cleat uh, pieces, I was using a brad nailer a lot. Mm-hmm. But see, here's, here's a twofold thing. I really want a smaller compressor because then I can gain floor space. I can also have a compressor that I'm able to take, every, you know, wherever I need it around the house, um, you know, if I'm doing something inside or whatnot. Um, and not have to worry about extension cords. Then on top of that, um, I was also looking at the Ryobi. Oh man. Wait, the Milwaukee compressor you're talking about, that's battery operated. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know. I definitely couldn't do that. Yeah. I I could plug in, not to worry about charging a battery. Well, see, I have, 
I, currently I have three 12 volt batteries. So if all three are charged, I know I can run that thing for a while without yeah. me going through a battery. A 12 volt lasts a long time. I'm surprised with those batteries. So it is battery operated. And then my thought process was to keep it up on a shelf and then utilize it, you know, have the hose coming off of it. And then if I need to take it outside, I could just take it off the shelf and I got it outside. And if it's quiet enough, I don't have to worry about, you know, it running too long or whatnot and the neighbors, you know, cause you know, I'm out there sometimes grinding away and you know, I don't need any more noise, but it's just a thought at this point. So definitely something to look into for myself. Like I said, I have the Milwaukee platform. I'm running that it, at, at my regular job, I'm running that at home. So I have all the stuff to go with it. I would just need, you know, the tool itself. And if they go on sale, that's even better. I agree. I, I mean, not for me, but uh, yeah, I mean, if it would work for you, I could see definitely being on the shelf and utilizing huh. when you need you it. You said that would might work. work. Um, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that I would maybe consider getting battery operated that's similar to that is having a shop vac mm. that's battery operated, a small one that I can use for my uh, miter saw and for, um, mm. you know, my sanding. But uh, that's about it. I mean, like, I, I understand cordless is the new thing and yep. everyone wants to do pretty much everything with. And for people that go to job sites, that's that's a wonderful capability, you know. You need that. Almost. Oh, yeah. It definitely makes life easier. But most of my stuff, I'm not taking anywhere. Mm-hmm. And I'm not so concerned about that. So even with a shop vac, I would, a small one for those two purposes, I would even want corded with that. I don't know. It, th- this conversation can go on forever. <laughs> yeah, it definitely could. I, You know, I actually ran into some scenarios where I uh, I had a buddy call me and he's like, hey, you know, can you help me out? I need air. You know, I don't. He's on the side of the road and I'm thinking, well, if I had the, you know, battery operated compressor, then it's, you know, wonderful for that. That's one scenario. But if I need to go into the house or something like that with it, then I don't have to, because trust me, I remember when I was putting up a, a pallet wall with Kim, we had that little pancake compressor and that thing just vibrated the whole house. It was just loud. Mm-hmm. It was obnoxious. It almost scared me off of the, uh, um, it almost made me fall off the ladder that I was on because <laughs> it was so quiet in there. And next thing you know, this thing kicks on and I, I was getting, I got startled by it. Maybe I'm a little girl, but whatever. And no, I mean, it happens, especially when you're, you know, working on something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing with a car thing is, is I got a small compressor for my car that plugs into the uh, outlet. And I, I mean, like it works fine. I don't have to work. And I, I've actually brought that to people and I was like, here, Oh, wait a minute. You're trying to find reasons to buy it. I'm Look, sorry. Man, I want the Milwaukee one. So stop it. But he wasn't actually filling up a tire. He needed to actually swap his tire. So I didn't have my cordless impact with me. I actually have an air impact. So I was thinking maybe I could, you know, somehow gather air in my arms, throw it in my truck, and then I got nothing on this one. I just want the cordless one. Fair enough. Tools. It's tools. <laughs> We're tools. We all want, we want all the tools. Just give us the tools. You and I are guys. Uh, we like tools. We want tools all the time. With that, I think uh, we're going to wrap this episode up. Um, I mean, tools, tools, and more tools. That's what it comes down to. Make sure you have good dust collection no matter what kind you have, shop vac or a dedicated system. You don't want those fine dust particulates to be in your shop because, you know, one thing with woodworking, it could definitely, definitely hurt you in the long mm-hmm. run by inhaling all that stuff. Even a filter of some sort in the shop helps. Remember, we're going to be doing a safety week here in the coming weeks. Keep an eye out there. Bow products and firm grip gloves are donating things to me and I'm waiting for them to get in. That way I can go ahead and utilize those and show you the benefits of having some of these safety features in the shop to send in questions or reach us for any kind of questions. Even if you don't want to send them in for the show, you can go ahead and get a hold of AJ at crafted and NJ or myself at North country woodworking. The podcast has a page as well at sawdust nation podcast. If you're going to send in questions and you don't DM us, go ahead and do a voice clip and send it to our Gmail account at sawdustnationpodcast at gmail.com. So Josh stole all my stuff. 
because it says it. I did not. Right there. I'm showing Josh as we speak. It says A, J, intro and contacts. Josh oh, always Jesus. likes taking go, my stuff. This go is, ahead. This is why. Go this ahead. is why your cat and I specifically talked and we're kicking you off. Fine. I'll erase all that and you can go ahead nope. and do it. Nope. I just, I was the one to say nope. wrap nope. it up. If you kind of say, okay, time to wrap it up, nope. AJ, nope. go ahead. Anyway, besides Josh's and I banter, my final thoughts on this episode are, we have a promo code through Sticker Beat for our Sawdust Nation stickers. Well, not just for our Sawdust Nation stickers, because that would be kind of odd for you just to order our stickers. Um, but if you want to place an order with Sticker Beat, <laughs> head over to their website, and then at checkout, type in Sawdust Nation in the promo code, and then you will receive 20% off at of any order. Uh, just letting you know that these stickers are high quality. They are made of 3M vinyl. They stick to anything, and they'll last a long time. Uh, I know I have them in my shop. My stickers are all sticker beat. I Once I found them, I kind of stuck with them. And, you know, it's not because of any other reason that I really stand behind their product. They're quality, quality stickers. Um, I do want to reach out to them to see if I can maybe get a larger decal so I can place that somewhere in the shop. Um, and then, you know, it can be seen because the shop's small, so it'll be seen on every, almost every angle. And then, um, if you are in the market to get your own logo printed out on some decals and send those out to other makers, hit up sticker beat and, uh, use sawdust nation as the promo code. So with that, I don't know about final words. You really, you really put me on a spot when I come to final words, like I could do contacts, but I don't know about final words because. My final words would be like, yo, go check us out on Apple. Ah, you didn't mention that. <laughs> nope, I've left it for if you on purpose. If you listen on Apple Podcast, um, go leave us a five-star review. You can leave us five one-star reviews as well if you'd like because that just equals five stars. Any publicity is good publicity. I heard that once or twice before. Don't leave us a one-star. Five stars only. And if you don't, you're, you're going to get fired. No, Josh's cat. I'm going to replace you with your cat. <laughs> Josh's cat is going to be the, the five-star raider checker. She's going to make sure that people are doing five stars on those. So She will find you. You, she will. She will. And if you want, leave us a comment on Apple Podcast as well. Let us know how much you like this show, how much you really want Josh's cat on the show. And then um, we will let you know when Josh's cat will be on the show. And I just wanted to say... Thank you for listening to the 21st episode, the 100% legal episode. I don't know why, why you laugh every single time at everything. Jesus, your mind goes all over. Nope, I, nope. I am just a happy guy. He's a, I, I, he's a happy, happy guy, everybody. So anyway, thank you for <laughs> listening to the 21st episode of Sawdust Nation. I am Crafted in NJ. My name is also AJ. And that guy is Josh over at North Country Woodworking. I love everybody. I hope everybody has a great night. And thank you for listening and being part of this Sawdust Nation. See? How am I supposed to follow that? I don't know. How, how, am, I, how am I supposed to follow that? You, you can't. You just can't. I don't know. Bye byes everybody. Bye byes Sawdust Nation. Out. Bye-bye. Meow. Uh, show title should be, we just come up with some random and talk about it.